Bye, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news on YouTube. Look, look, there's going to be drinking. Look, look, there's going to be smoking. Look, look, there's going to be swearing. So look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Bye, and welcome everyone. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Yes, yes it is, yes it is. Yes, it is, brothers. Of course it is. All right. So, you know how we do our Saturday show. It's sort of a cleanup of all the stuff I kind of wanted to talk to you about during the week, but kind of weren't big enough or good enough for what I want to teach you guys, well, talk to you guys about. And so, we're going to start with, obviously, the IOTA Trinity Wallet update. We're going to talk about that right now. IOTA just came out with a some tweets and stuff about an hour ago. It is now 9.58 a.m. Saturday, East Coast time, New York, uh, America. Not New York, uh, South Beach, uh, East Coast America. And uh, so this is fresh, fresh news, fresh news. All right, and then Steemit joins Tron. We're going to talk about that. Stellar-based exchange buys Perth Glory. So if you're a, if you're a, a Perth, uh, I guess, Australian soccer fan, well, your team just got bought, and we're going to talk about that, and it's going to do all this stuff with the Stellar Network. And then... We're not going to get too deep into this one, but IOTA Tangle EE. Yes, guy, I know you wanted me to talk about it, so I made sure we're going to yap yap a little bit about it because we talked about it the other day a little bit when Binium put the thing. And then IOTA Transport and Healthcare, new use cases. Bang. And then we're going to talk about global FATF compliance. Got to be FATF compliant in this day and age. If you're not FATF compliant, hmm. And so I'm going to show you what the major regions of the world are doing with FATF. Quickly, quickly. We're not going to get into mega, mega detail on that. And then finally, the U.S. could fall behind on crypto rags. Look, look, America. You best wake the fuck up, boy. You best wake the fuck up, son. You falling behind, boy. You fall real far. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. So, look, look, let's begin how we begin. Ooh, it's right in my grill. Let's begin how we begin, brothers. Bye. Yes. Slide on over here. Oh, actually, I forgot to even open up the fucking thing. Hold on. Let me get this thing open. Bah! That's how we do that. Man, all right, what we got? So I don't have to refresh since I just opened it. So look, look, what we got? Bitcoin at $10,235. Oh, I see. I'll do it over here. $10,235. And when I left yesterday, oh my gosh, when I left yesterday it was $10,234. So yes, we've gone up a magnificent $1. $1, $1, $1. All right. Look, look. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Usual suspects. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Litecoin, EOS, Tether, Binance Coin, and Tezos. Still holding the 10. All right, Tezos, look at you. All right, market moves of the day, brothers. Single digits up to single digits, and sisters. Single digits up to single digits down. <clears throat> yes. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Fucking you, chain. Single digits up, single digits down. Two. Single digits up to single digits down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like? Go get it because it's on sale. Top 10. Loser of the day. Quant. Molecular future. Terra. Bitcoin FSV. Crypto.com coin. Chili's. Zcash. Hetero hash graph, swipe, and theta. All right, let's look at the... Oh, oh yeah, we're going to do that in a second. All right. Uh, let's look at top 10 of the day. Bang, look at all those gains. Nice gains. Solid gains. Yes. All right, top 10 of the day, brothers. <clears throat> Wax, Golem, Sciacoin, Elf, Komodo, BitTorrent, Omisko, Aeon, Pundix, and Zillica. Let's see what the total mark cap of the day is. 
305.9 billion. When I left you yesterday, we were at 302.9 billion. So that's a nice even $3 billion up. All right. 24 hour volume 151.4. That's a significant drop. To be expected, it's the weekend. People got things to do. Uh, so the mar uh, 24 hour volume is $151.4 billion. When I left yesterday, it was 174.3. So we have gone down 23, $22.9 billion. All right, look, look. All right, let's get this marathon on the go. <laughs> Holy. All right. I like this Saturday show thing, though. We'll do it. All right. So first of all, bang. Solution underway. Trinity Wallet. So the Trinity Wallet. So listen up. I can't emphasize this enough. I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not open your Trinity wallet. Do not open your Trinity wallet. And again, do not open your fucking Trinity wallet. Don't open it until they say it's all clear, okay? Don't do it. Don't do it. Believe me, I'm tempted. Oh, I got, I got, I got, look, I got goods on that wallet. And look, look, I'm tempted to look and see if my stuff is still there. But just, just follow instructions. Just follow instructions. Do not open that wallet. All right. Don't open that wallet. Don't do it. All right. Excuse me about that there. All right, look, look, let's get on with this, and I'll let's, 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 get, let's get going. So, as Crypto News Flash already reported, IOTA suffered a targeted attack against the Trinity wallet. It is still strongly discouraged from using the Trinity wallet. IOTA transactions are still not being processed, but major damage has been prevented as the coordinator has been disabled and therefore no transactions can be finally confirmed. So that coordinator thing, and that's, I guess these guys who were complaining about IOTA kind of had a point, right? They've been complaining, oh, the coordinator, it's too centralized, too centralized, too centralized. And that's why that chrysalis thing is coming out soon. Or was that last week? Either coming out or, or came out. I don't remember exactly. And then that quarter side thing is coming later this year. And so, but you have to understand that this is a wallet problem. Hold on, let me read. I think they explain it. The ongoing investigation shows that there's no breach of the core protocol. Exactly. It's not like a 51% attack or a fucking double spend or some bullshit, you know, fuckery like that. It's a third party. Well, it's not third party. It's IOTA came out with that wallet, but yeesh, obviously they it wasn't secure enough. And so, but there's no breach in the protocol. So there's no, so people, well, what about, what, what about all the onboarding, Shamari? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That doesn't change anything. That's just wallet shit. Um, as far as the tech goes, yeah. You know, like, remember this, it's a wallet hack. IOTA's quantum proof. You can't hack it. So it's nothing to do with IOTA per se. It's that wallet. All right, we've said that already, man. All evidence indicates that there is no problem with the Trilogy wallet dependency. That there is a problem. Sorry. Yes, exactly. That's what it was. There is a problem with the wallet dependency. Uh, Dominic Sheener, founder of IOTA, recently stated that the team will today announce an action plan on how IOTA Foundation will resolve the case. So he says right here, and this is what I'm talking about, uh, they got it, uh, the attack came through a third party integration uh, and they're currently working on a plan to get over the exploit and get the network back into full operation. Um, and then we also want, so let me just read the whole thing actually. And so this is what IOTA says. We also want to allow anyone who might have been affected to safely transition. So we're working, and that's why they're making everyone stop, right? Uh, stop using your wallets for now. We're working on an action plan, which will be communicated as soon as possible. On the vulnerability side, all parties are notified, and they're working with law enforcement and external auditors to fully understand how this happened. I think they actually, they talked to like 10 people, because it only affected 10 people, right? 
And they said that there might be 10 other people that got affected. I think they gave them their money back or something. And then blah, 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 the new, the new. So the Trinity wallet will be updated to version 2.0 in a timely manner to prevent such hacks from happening in the future. Let me tell you something. You can fuck that wallet. You can go fuck that wallet. As soon as they allow me to open that wallet, I'm taking those iota and putting them right on a ledger. Right on. Where's my dag on? Hold on. One second. I'm going to show you flipping ledger right here. <laughs> yes, this is the way to go right now, boys. You can fuck all those wallets. You can fuck all that. Bang, ledgers and ledgers, ledgers and ledgers. Get your ledgers. Put your stuff on it. And uh, <laughs> yo, don't fuck around. Do not fuck around. Get these. And what did it say? What does it say? Cheener goes on to describe that despite this hack, the community remains united. And the support, the investors, I hate it. the community. I'm not a part of your community. I'm an investor, fuck stick. <laughs> and support for the project is overwhelming. Yes. One Twitter user has summarized the positive aspects of the situation as follows. Some positive aspects of the Trinity hack are, we learned how important hardware wallets are. Bang! I knew it. I knew it. You know what? This one has got my V. See, it says V chain. This one's got my V chain on it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't put it on that V-Chain wallet thing. And I have been thinking about doing it, but fuck all of that. Hardware, wallets, people. The fucking thing costs like 100 bucks. And dag on, dag on, you could put a million dollars worth of shit on here. And your shit is safe. As you can see, the only reason I have my wallets is because I'm doing my portfolio juggle this week. So I took them out of my bank. Oh, and let me tell you guys. So if you're new here, this is what I do. Whenever I buy something, usually... I buy it, and then I throw it right on a ledger, right away. Uh, the only reason I have that Trinity wallet is because I bought that shit in the middle of the night one day, and so my bank wasn't open for me to go get my... Oh, and so what I do is I put my stuff on my ledgers, and then I have them in my bank at the, in a safety deposit box, right? Um, it's how I do it. And then when I know I'm going to do a juggle, as you can see right here, I pull them out, and... Uh, I get her done. I get her done. So, yeah. Right? This one's got the Neo in it. So, the Neo's got to go. And then a few other things. All right. So, we learned that the coordinator can do shut down transactions. And we saw a green I, a great IF team. We saw IOTA strong community. All right. And then the price. Fuck all the price. This hack has shown that using a blood clot. Look, look, brothers. Hardware wallet is the most secure solution to store or any other cryptocurrency. You can fuck all that pocket change. They can keep their little pocket change. Fuck all that. If you... It, it, shit, they can keep all that pocket change. They can fuck all that. Put them on a wallet. Bang! And you will be safe. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy. Because right now I'm sitting here. Can't open my Trinity wallet. And I'm just like, what's happening with it? What's happening with my money, right? My iotas. I have I most of my iotas are actually still on Binance. To tell you the truth, uh, I just got lazy. I didn't like I said. I didn't go to the bank and get my 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 ledgers. And so tomorrow I'm or later today I'm going to move my iotas to my my ledger. But I'm, actually, I'm glad those iotas are on Binance and not on the. Well, I got to see. I don't even know if we're allowed to use the network. So we got to see about that. Yes. All right. Hardware wallets. All right. So that's the IOTA thing, guys. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Uh, it was a wallet hack. It's nothing to do with Tangle. Tangle's IOTA proof, fuck stick. Or sorry, IOTA proof. Quantum proof. You can't hack it. So so how do you feel, Shamari? I'll say this. Uh, I'm a little angry, but am I worried? No. No, I'm not worried at all. I still have my passphrase key. Or what is it called? The passphrase. Is it called the passphrase? What do they call their thing? Yeah, right? Wasn't it called? A, anyway, whatever the thing is, man. 
And so I'm just going to chill out and wait. So they come out with this new version of their wallet. And when they do, I'm going to call up that and then throw, like I said, as soon as I can get my hands on those, putting them right on a wallet and you can fuck all this software storage nonsense. All right. Don't do it, brothers. Do not do it. Do not do it. All right. Now, steam it. Bang. To shift its proprietary blockchain and token to Tron Network. So I guess this is the big announcement Tron made. Justin Sun had to make, right? All right. So they're going to onboard another wannabe YouTube thing. All right. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, it's not unfortunate. I mean, that's great. I mean, it's good for the company. I mean, <laughs> that's not the kind of announcement I wanted to hear. In terms of my portfolio, you guys know I own a lot of Tron. I wanted to hear some actual real company. Uh, so I'm going to move forward with my Tron liquidation this weekend personally. But I'm not saying anything's wrong with Tron. Tron's not a scam. And Justin Sun's not a scammer. There's nothing wrong. Just for my portfolio, not my caliber. Not my caliber. That Tron is going to go into some factum. Yes. But look, look. Tron lovers. Tron's doing a... Tron, Tron bought another company, so... Let's check it out. But yeah, this isn't this isn't good enough to make me hold to keep holding this. I'm pissed off. Look, the kid's got a fucking. I mean, I knew he wanted to, to start his own internet thing. He said that, but I thought he meant like something different. I don't know what I thought he meant, but I didn't know he was really gonna just fucking like for me, for me, for me. I'm complaining. I'm complaining. If you like what he's doing, great, great. Then don't worry about it. But. I thought he was going to do a whole other thing. When I heard multi-sig came last year, that's institutional grade. I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to onboard big institutions and that. He's still playing around with this kind of wannabe YouTube stuff. And so for me, and gambling games and nonsense. So for me, we're going to part ways. I mean, you know, if he onboards some shit later, maybe I'll get back in. But I'm parting ways tonight. So the Tron Foundation, a cryptocurrency firm that is known for hyping is long it's long ledger of partnerships appears to have entered a particularly important one today the maintainer of major cryptocurrency tron has just partnered with steemit i mean and you know what the other thing is they own steemit he bought steemit and dtube if you go to dtube and you go to steemit cryptocurrency blockchain news is on both of them yeah and i don't even use them go there i put up a few videos for about a week or two and then i was like yo fuck this piece of shit <laughs> so I'm telling you, go look at the, the thing. The CB Newswire is there. Yeah, on both of those. Um, That's way back. That was from 2018 shit. So, Steam it, old token Steam to move to the Tron blockchain too. So, let's read it. One second, let me get a sip. I know, I know. You're probably like, Shimori, man, why are, you, why are you so down? I'm just so down because I have so much Tron. Like, I have high single digits of Tron in terms of, like, you know what I'm talking about? Well, in the thousands. I don't know the exact number. Probably about seven, eight grand worth. All right? And, uh, fuck, it's just disappointing, man. Like, I wanted this shit. Fuck, this shit is super fast. It's super secure. The fucking kid has multi-sig. And he just won't stop with these fucking video games. Like I said the other day, it's like he's a 17-year-old boy. And he just keeps buying all this weird little crap. Like, you got this fucking blockchain fuckstick. Like, get some big companies to make some distributed apps on your thing, man. Right? And he's all deep into China. He went, he he he, he, he was a student of Jack Ma, the ex-CEO of fucking Alibaba. <laughs> what? You think this kid would fucking understand... Go get some corporates, you idiot. So, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I mean, the block. there's nothing wrong with the blockchain. There's nothing wrong with the kid. But just in terms of my portfolio, yeah, dog. That is going to have to be juggled. So, Tron Foundation will work with the firm to move Steemit and other Steam blockchain-based decentralized applications, dApps, to the Tron blockchain. Uh, the firms said in an announcement shared with Cointelegraph on February 14th. Uh, the partnership also includes the shift of old Steam tokens to a new Steam token based on the Tron blockchain. 
Following the news, Steam token surged almost 26% over 24-hour period as of press time. Uh, Tron has a... Hold on. TRX has also edged up notably 10%. Additionally, the collaboration will enable giveaways... To existing Tron users with the new Tron based Steam token as well as new accelerator program towards the developer community. The founder and CEO Justin Sun expressed confidence that the new partnership will allow the companies to usher in a new era of decentralized social networking. Oh, please. <laughs> Sun confirmed the news on Twitter, giving the name Steamit 2.0 to the upcoming Tron based Steamit. So, is that it? Yeah, we're not going to yap yap about all that. So, there it is, man. That's what his big announcement was to get a new. Uh, so that's what it is, man. He got Steam It, so Steam It's on there. And, uh, well, that's that. That's that. And so Tron Hodlers, I mean, if that's what you want, if you're into all that, like the whole Tron verse, I mean, I love the Tron verse. I've been invested in it for a long, long, well, for a while. But daggone, it's just, it, it, I can handle that for 2018. I handled it in 2019. But for me personally, uh yeah, that's that's not that's not enough for my portfolio. I need to see Fortune 500s. Like I said, if anything doesn't have a Fortune 500 onboarded, bah! I'm slapping Remember that slap video I showed you the other day? Bah! Right out of the portfolio, right out. Oh yeah, ruthless. <laughs> yeah, tonight I'm about to get ruthless with this fucking place. That's why I got my shit out of the safety deposit box. Motherfuckers are going to know about some shit tonight. They're going to know about some shit tonight. And so, uh, yeah, so I got to juggle like that. You know, and, and like I said, guys, there is no excuse why everything you own shouldn't have Fortune 500s. You know what I mean? Like, you got to think about this. Well, I like that idea, Shamari. I think that's such a great idea. Are these institutional investors going to think that's a great idea? That's what you have to invest in. For the people that are about to come buy your stuff when the tsunami arrives, right? And so for me, yeah, I got to bounce. So look, look, let's bounce just like this. Bye. Yes. And Stellar Lumens, I know. This is the other one. Stellar, though, I might have a little mercy, though. Because they're doing that gone. Anyway, I'm not going to, let's not talk about the juggle so much. The Tron still, same thing. But the Stellar, I am considering going back to the keeping of the half of it because uh that black <sighs> they're doing a bunch of shit so anyways look stellar based london football exchange has announced the acquisition of an 80 percent stake in the third division club <laughs> club perth glory fc third division club so that's probably not a big soccer club millions of soccer fans worldwide will benefit from the innovative advantage of blockchain technology so this reminds me of the story I wrote you guys yesterday. Wrote you guys that read to you guys yesterday when Chili's onboarded FC Barcelona. So it looks like there's a couple of these blockchains running around and they're trying to grab up all these sports teams and saying, hey, we're going to give you a token and that way your fans can interact with you online and, you know, you could give your, your fans prizes and, you know, just, just what else did they say? A bunch of other stuff. We read it yesterday. And so, yeah, well, Chili's isn't the only one. This company's doing it. So let's check it out. Oh, well, this company is a little different. They're actually buying the soccer team. My bad, my bad. The other thing was FC Barcelona was just onboarded. This company is actually buying the soccer team. All right, yes, I forgot about that. But they're doing the blockchain stuff is what I mean. Is what I care. It was what, you know, matters for us. I don't really give a fuck if they're buying a fucking soccer team or not. So look, the London Football Exchange announced that it will acquire 80% of the shares of Australian football club Perth Glory. All right, good for them. Blah, 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 blah. The CEO says that uh, he's going to still hold 20% of the club. Blah, 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 blah. All right. 
So, LFP was founded in 2018 with the goal of using cryptocurrencies to create a football exchange and market where fans, traders, and investors can buy shares or purchase goods directly from football clubs. Like I told you about, like I said, my American brothers, <laughs> look, the Europeans, they're rabid about their football clubs. If you think you have a buddy here in America who loves his team, yeah, yeah, you don't know what love about a team is <laughs> until you've seen a European talk about their football clubs, all right? Soccer, as we call it here, soccer. And uh, look, 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 and so that's what makes me, I've seen the passion. I told you, I lived in Germany, and they were, had to call in the cops and tell them, Hooligans, don't mess around. We have zero tolerance. Like, that's the passion. And so I can see these things working, right? Like, if you did this for an American team, I'm not really sure. I mean, hardcore, hardcore fans would get into it maybe. Like, if you're a hardcore, hardcore Lakers fan or hardcore, you know, whatever team LeBron is on fan or something. But... I don't really see, you know, I couldn't see it happening like across a whole league or something. Whereas in Europe, look, every single talker, soccer team has a cult and it'll work. It'll work. And so, uh, yeah, uh, through the cooperation, owners of Stellar Lumens or Stellar Lumens can use the LFC platform to invest in professional football clubs. Now, does that mean you can like invest like in a stock? Because if that's the case, look, look. Because <laughs> those in, over in Europe, those soccer clubs are super mega rich. Mega, mega rich. They pay their players just crazy amounts of money. But I don't really care about that. It's about the income that they generate if you're going to invest in it. Are they generating revenue or not? But of course they are. Like I just said, they all have cults. So especially the low-cost transactions in near real-time processing by using the Stellar blockchain are a big advantage compared to traditional money transfer methods. Exactly, that's the beauty of Stellar, baby. Bon, super fast. Well, and more than just super fast, you can put whatever tokens you want on it. That's the power. It's the power of the Stellar, and that's why, daggone, I might hold on to... Let's just say what I'm going to do with my Stellar tonight is still up in the air, still up in the air. I told you, it's not like people think Stellar and Ripple compete. They're not competing. Stellar is a whole different thing. You can move anything you want over the Stellar network. You want to move your CBDC? Go for it. You want to move Stablecoin over it? Go for it. You don't need to use the XLM token on Stellar. Stellar is like Factum. Factum, right? The Department of Homeland Security uses Factum. Yeah, they don't use the token, though. They're just using the blockchain of it. And that's what Stellar's like. You can just use the blockchain and then do what you want on it, right? Uh, that's the difference. That's why I might hold this motherfucker, man. Shit. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm a little, I know, I hope I don't, I hope, I don't want to, I don't want to give you guys a downer day. Just this whole Trinity thing has my brain a little, I'm a little angry, guys. I'm a little angry. I'm trying to be cheerful for you. As you can see, I'm not even sipping properly. Dang on, I'm trying to cheer up, but fuck, this thing's really pissing me off, right? I'm angry, so that's what it is. How do you feel, Shamari? Angry. Are you worried? But I'm not worried. You see what I'm saying? I'm angry at a glitch, but I'm not worried. It's like Amazon.com, right? Or Amazon, you all know Amazon. They get hacked every once in a while, and some hacker will run off with 10 million credit cards, a million credit cards here, there, whatever. Yeah, but the company goes on, right? And that's the same thing as this, like, this is some back-end little bullshit little wallet thing. Yeah, it sucks, and it, it gives a taint, but does that change anything? No. The company rolls on, so. But I am a little upset, you know, because I want to see what the hell's going on in my wallet, right? And I can't look at it, and so I'm trying to put on a brave face for you guys so we have a good show. And we are going to have a good show, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bon! Yes, of course we are. So look, look, brothers and sisters. <laughs> look, look, let me just, let me just get a few. I'll take a few little bigger than normal sips here. I know it looks like I'm killing it, right? I just take tiny little sips. <laughs> this time I am going to take something. Hold on.
I know it looks crazy when I take it to the head, right? Me and my buddy Sean, we put out some shot. I pulled, well, actually not Sean, someone else. I, 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 he's like, dog on, dog. You, you getting wasted? I'm like, nah, dude. Those are just tiny little sips. Are we gonna get back to crypto? All right, settle down, buddy. It's the weekend. You got time. <laughs> so together, LF, <clears throat> LFE, and Stellar make the perfect match to transform the fan experience while introducing millions of loyal football fans to the benefits of the blockchain technology through speed, interconnectivity, and efficiency. Blockchain very popular in the football market. So, at the end of January, the top French football club, so we read about this the other day, Chili's is this one. The top French football club, Paris Saint-Germain, already sold tokens. That was on that Chili's thing we read yesterday. Well, it mentioned it in the story. And in the first round of sales, almost 20 million of the Paris Saint-Germain tokens were offered for the sale to fans for a price of two euros each. We did read about that, actually. Um, and then the Paris Saint-Germain token is an Ethereum ERC-20 token. Blah, 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 blah. But anyways, um, oh, and they allow you to have a, a, a say in the club's future decisions. Yeah, does it let you choose what players to buy? <laughs> Now that, that, uh, you know, the fans would, if it, if it did that, the fans would be buying the hell out of that. So, <laughs> yes, let's help you choose the players we want. All right, but anyway, the point being, though, is, bang, Stellar Lubins. Uh, this football exchange uh, is buying a fucking whole soccer club, and they're going to do it on the Stellar blockchain. And uh, so, there we go. Look, look, there we go, Stellar. Yeah, Stellar hodlers. So if you are a Stellar hodler, who's more, are you selling those Stellar? Look. I don't have an answer for that. I'll tell you right now. If it is, it won't be the whole, it won't be the whole, it won't be my whole, my whole position. Like I said, like, fuck that. I got, you know, but. We'll still have to see, though. We'll still have to see. Because Stellar is amazing, like I said, right? Like, you don't need to use the token, right? That's the difference. Like, Stellar and Factum. That's one of the things I love about Factum. Not just that the market cap is amazing and that the price is so low, but... And that they've got onboardings from the Department of Homeland fucking security and shit, but you don't have to use the token. And that opens up a, a, a myriad of opportunities for any organization that wants to use the blockchain like you know what i mean like that's the problem we're invested in what's you know these are tokenized blockchains right these are tokenized blockchains but most of them you know but you don't obviously like hyperledger and all that that's private blockchains non-tokenized all that right and that's the beauty of stellar stellar is you can either use stellar as a public blockchain or you can also lock it down and make it a, uh, what do they call this? What's the wording you fucking crypto fucks use? Oh, permission, wait. Right, permission to blockchain. Anyway, fuck all that, just public and private. So that's the thing about Stellar. If you wanna, if you wanna implement it as a private blockchain, you can. And that's the same with Factum. It, that's how the Department of Homeland Security is using Factum. They're not using the token, it's private. Obviously, it's Department of Homeland Security. You can't have people looking around. What the fuck you're doing? The Chinese would be all up in there. And so that's why Stellar, to me, I'm going to hodl. I'm going to hodl. I'm going to hodl. I want to hodl for at least, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Because that's the beauty, man. That's the beauty of it. And like I said, it ain't. it's not like everyone always thinks Stellar and Ripple are fighting. They're not fighting. Ripple's just a fucking little piece of utility crap you got to go get from some exchange to send to some other exchange that gets sent to some bank, if anyone actually did it, which they don't. Whereas Stellar Lumens, the banks can actually just, you just use our blockchain, which is just what Factum does with the Department of Homeland Security. Just, oh, okay, here's a blockchain. And you could do what you want with it. You want a private? Fine. You want a permissionless? Fine. You want a hybrid? Sorry, you want a private? Go for it. You want a public? Go for it. You wanted a hybrid so that part of your systems over here are public, but part are private? Go for it. 
and you don't need to use those lumens. Like I, I've, I just said it again. You can use CBDC, anything, anything on it, anything. You can move Bitcoin over all these, all these other tokens. You can move on it, and that's why for the future I see big things because I'm going to tell you right now, guys. A lot of these, the tokenized blockchains are one thing. People want to use these blockchains, but they don't want to use the tokens all the time, right? You know, I mean, look at Hyperledger. Look at um, who else we got out here? Like just other corporations that came out with blockchains. Yeah, they're not tokenized, but people want to use that tech. And so that's the beauty. Stellar and Factum allow you to use the tech without the token. Whereas most of these, well, it's about the token, right? And uh, you guys get what I'm saying? Or am I just yap yapping too long here? Holy. But you get what I'm saying? Shit. And that's why people are saying, you know, yeah, you know, IBM is still doing that WorldWire thing with Stellar for the banks. Because that's what they're saying is that, yeah, it's not about the lumens being used for some fucking bullshit liquidity and all this kind of crap. Nah. The Stellar network will be used by banks to do whatever they want on it, whatever they want. You don't have to use the XLM token. You could put whatever, you could run whatever you want on their bank. So if a bankster comes out with, or like JP Morgan, right? They wanna come out with their JP Morgan coin, you could run that on Stellar. Uh, CBDCs, that digital yuan coming out, well, it's called a renminbi, but the yuan's coming out. You could run that on Stellar, you guys get it? All right, let's move on, man. I, I feel like I just went too far preaching that one. <laughs> All right, so IOTA. Now let's get back to some IOTA. So look, guys, bang, new story. Oh, this thing, the Tangle EE. So this is what I was telling you guys about, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before. Yeah, but other co companies are coming together to design stuff around IOTA. You know what I mean? It's not IOTA's not shilling to them like, hey, guys, use our Tangle, use our Tangle. Nah. Nah, dog, nah. Mega corporations are saying, look, 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 nerd. Look, look, Iota boys. We're going to use this daggone tangle. And they're, watch, watch, I'll show you. And that's what I love. That's what I love. When other companies and other people are acknowledging how good something of yours is. I told you this before. It's like, you know, when a person tells you, well, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. Like I say, oh, I'm the greatest in the multiverse. Well, am I? Of course not. Well, of course I am. But I'm just saying, all right, all right, let's not use me. This is stupid. But let's look like uh, whoever, like, uh, I don't know, like who? Like just a person who says, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. Is it is it important to you that they say that they're great or that someone else does to you? Yo, dog. Yo, that guy right there, bang, he's banging on, bang, bang, bang. He's doing do, do, do. He's making deals like this, this, this. He's importing shit from here and here and here. Oh, he's got the connects up in China. He's got the connects in Turkey. Yeah, he'll help you import money. You know what I mean? Like, do you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys that'll brag about you, brag to you. Oh, yeah, I can get you this and this and this and this. Mm, all right. But it's a whole other thing if someone else brags to me about, hey, Shamari, you wanted to get in importing some leather from Turkey? That guy right there. He got you. He's got you. See what I'm saying? Third party perception. That's what it's called. Third party perception. So look, the IOTA Foundation is partnered with leading open source foundation Eclipse to unveil a new working group dedicated to promoting the commercial adoption of IOTA Tangle, the project version of distributed ledger technology DLT. The new working group named Tangle EE, according to a Tuesday announcement by the IOTA Foundation, includes a diverse group of leading firms, academics, and standards body. That's the key. I mean, I know everyone's looking at Dell and the big corporations, but standards bodies are part of this thing. That's pretty wild, man. That's pretty wild, man. That's that's big stuff right there. That's, you know, like standards body. Like, so what, what do you mean, Shamar? So like this, fuckstick. Yeah, you know how you can plug your USB into anything? Yeah, because that's a standard. <laughs> right? You know how Bluetooth works over anything that's with Bluetooth or that use, that has Bluetooth? You can transfer data with anything that... Yeah, because Bluetooth is a standard. Yeah, well, that standard came because 
standards bodies made it so in a way uh that's not the way to say it but but yeah you know what i mean like um it's called like iso standards right you know what an iso standard is so like um for instance swift right uh this banking thing you know ripple swift killer all right swift is an iso standards body so your bank gets its number your its ba- its banking number from swift it issues your bank the uh holy my camera just fell down well that one did it, it it's the one that issues it issues the number for your bank right and that's called iso standards and um and that's it like uh yeah 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 all right let's move on in developing data payment and all oh, right holy crap in developing data developing data payment and identity identity solutions and tooling on iota's tangle uh 15 leading businesses and academic institutions notably including American multinational computer technology company, Dell, and Switzerland headquartered STM Microelectronics. We read about STM already. They've already patented that stuff around IOTA. They've already built those motherboards. STM Microelectronics is the biggest microelectronics company in Europe, uh, are among the founding members of the new working group. In other words, they're trying to make it a standard. I'm still not going to say the standard, though. I'm still going to say a standard, but fuck. Under the umbrella, these organizations can steer the direction of IOTA's development and build their products, services, and intellectual property on the network without any risk of license infringement down the line. Oh, what's going on? Actually, I never caught that part. Under the umbrella, can steer the direction of build their products, services, and Oh, okay, I see. Right, so... They can, they can, yeah, they can build around IOTA without getting sued later. <laughs> That's basically what that means. So the two projects, the first two from the Tangle EE, they have disclosed the first two projects. The first one is Unified Identity Project is reportedly designed to build an interoperable trust layer that enables identity for people, organizations, and things. So once you do this identity thing, you'll be able to, transact and do stuff on the network you know without problem because you will be verified and and all this and all this and trusted uh and then on the other hand decentralized marketplaces will lead to the development of a solution that allows member organizations to deploy and operate in industry focused decentralized marketplaces seamlessly all right look look all right so there you go another one Oh, that's the Tangle E. That's not an onboarding. That's that Tangle E. Well, it's an onboarding like a motherfucker. Actually, that's an onboarding like a motherfucker because it's not an onboarding of one company. It's an onboarding of mega corporations and and academic firms and standards bodies. And uh, they're all doing it. They're all doing it. Dell and bang, STM Microelectronics, the biggest one in Europe. To build stuff around iota and the tangle exactly forget the word iota but build stuff around the tangle right and so uh yeah guys amazing all right oh yeah we got more to go here brothers we got more to go this saturday these saturday shows are going to be a long one aren't they holy all right so new use cases in transport and healthcare for who iota oh yeah yet and these are interesting so we're not going to talk about both all of these because they all talk they, they also talk about that ee group thing but i just whoops sorry hold on whoa what happened there we're not going to talk about everything but we are going to talk about hold on a second all right hold on i like this little the the healthcare thing they have this shit all right well I'll just read it and tell the people so the positive news for iota beyond the recent warning of a possible attack on the Trinity wallet, are not stopping. Oh, yeah, the policy of news isn't stopping. That ain't stopping. Fuck a wallet. Put your shit on a ledger, boys. Look, look, boys and girls. 
Bang. Look, look, Ledger. If you want to sponsor me, I'll fucking pump your shit. I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. I mean, really. I mean, that's the... Yeah, you guys told me about... When I was moving, my when Binance kicked us off of, of, of here in America, they kicked us off. I was like, oh, no, guys, I need VeChain. And you guys were like, oh, Shamari, move your VeChain to this wallet thingy. And I was like, fuck all that. I have too much. I have millions of them. So I can't risk any kind of thing like that at all. That's going to make me rich. And so I just threw it on. There it is, VeChain. That's it right there. And uh, and I label them. So this is my my one. This is the first one I ever got. And this is number three. And then I have this other one. It's still in the... It's still in the... Uh, what do you call that? Safety deposit box. That's how you got to do it, guys. Just get yourself a few ledgers. <sighs> Safe. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. After this, when they give me my IOTA back, I'm moving it right to this one right here. V chain, and the the ne when you when you see me next time after this fiasco, it'll say IOTA right underneath. It's gonna say IOTA right underneath. <laughs> Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Holy. Oh yeah, we're gonna have mass adoption. Yeah, yeah. Soccer mom and dad want to put up with this shit. Fuck stick. Fuck no. And and the the worst thing is this. You know, you know. Just. People can't afford to lose this kind of money, man. You know what I mean? Like, people can't afford to lose this kind of crap. And I don't know. That pisses me off. Anyway, let's move on, though. Um, What are we talking about even? Fuck. Oh, yeah. The new uh, use cases. Okay. So that's that E shit we just talked about two seconds ago. So let's miss that. And then these guys want to use IOTA for transport and mobility. We've talked about that before, right? IOTA's already in the Volkswagens, the Audis, uh, Jaguar, so, and we already know they're sending the data to the smart cities. We've talked about that already, so we're going to just skip all that crap. But here's a new thing I never heard about. Smart Ops is going to bring IOTA to the patients. It's a healthcare thing. In Malaysia, IOTA's technology is being used in a new use case. So, following the motto, self-sovereign health ID powered by IOTA, smart ops. And you see what they did? That's their motto, powered by IOTA. So, this is a whole healthcare company, and they're like, look, look, we're IOTA powered. People are building whole companies around this Tangle thing. So, smart ops has developed various medical devices, including a a blood pressure monitor, a baby thermometer, and a device for measuring blood glucose. The devices collect medical data. The devices collect medical data. This data, together with data from hospitals, is connected and collected in a health portal. Only the patient can access the data via a smartphone app. So, and then they also have the Missy Health app. Connects to Bluetooth medical devices to collect via vital uh, health data so that patients can view their health status, so they can view their health status. In addition, the company also offers the Smart Ops Vital Sign Monitoring System, uh, which enables the wireless transmission of vital data from the patient directly to the care unit for monitoring. So I don't know, maybe if you're in a, you have a heart attack or something and you call 911, well, these EMT guys, the the, the, the nurses inside the, uh, the uh, ambulance, they're going to be boop, 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 you know, taking your measure, boop, 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 you know, touching you with all this stuff and putting stuff under your tongue and all this. And that data, boom, 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 is going to get sent directly, right? It says directly to the care unit. And yeah, by the time you get there, they're already going to know what's wrong with you or something. Well, maybe not what's fully wrong with you, but you know what I mean? They're going to have your vital signs already. And so this means that the nursing staff no longer have to write down the shit on paper but not only that it's already there for them by the time the patient gets there bang they've got the vitals right you don't have to drive the patient then do vitals then plan how you're going to help them you get the vitals in the what do you call that the ambulance and by the time the patient gets there they're like all right buddy come on bang 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 bang. you know we got you and we're going to do this and that so that's a new uk case for iada bye medical Medical stuff, which is cool, right? 
which is cool. Because look, look, we're all going to get old one day. And we're all going to have to call 911 one day. <laughs> and so I'd like my vitals, bang, waiting for me when that daggone nurse, uh, when, I, when they finally get, roll me over to the hospital. So that's a good thing. I like that. That's a thing, a pretty good idea. So look, look. All right, now let's get to some more, uh, more of the Shamari stuff. Bang! Governments begin to roll out the fat apps. Travel rule around the globe. So look, look. If you're new here, <clears throat> FADF is the Financial Action Task Force. It's all around the world. And what it is is they tell you how to be uh, anti-money laundering and anti-terrorist financing compliant. You can go either further than FADF or you can be a little lighter. The FADFs are recommendations, right? Like I told you guys, these international organizations, they recommend stuff, but you don't have to do it, right? Like when the United Nations says, hey, President Bashar al-Assad in Syria, stop killing your people. He can either stop or he just tells them to go fuck themselves, which is what he's been doing for the past nine years, right? And so, whereas FATF is a big deal because the countries are actually doing it and they're actually adopting it, right? And um, so I'm just gonna show you, we're gonna go quick. We're not gonna get so deep, but what different countries are doing in terms of the FATF compliance around the world, okay? That app is the Financial Action Task Force. All right. Just to keep you updated. I like these stories. You guys know. I like the stories where they kind of group stuff sometimes about stuff. And this is a grouping, you know. We read about Fat F separately, but I like when you show me the whole who's doing it, you know. In one story, it makes it easier to wrap your head around it, right? Around the concept and around the importance. Look, look, all right, let's move on. So, it's been nearly, <clears throat> it's been nearly eight months since the Financial Action Task Force issued its <laughs> divisive crypto directives. Establishing traditional banking regulations within the crypto sector. Well, that's not so divisive if you're just doing what regular banks do, you fucking idiot. What do you want to do? So with the year-long adoption deadline fast approaching. Oh, yeah, so they had a deadline, right? You got to get this done by a certain time. Um, shit, I wish I knew. Ah, fuck. Uh, so with the year-long adoption deadline fast approaching, how have the world's regulatory authorities responded to the guidelines so far? So you guys know what Fat F is, right? I don't have to explain to you guys. You guys have been here long enough. And if you're new, look, man, it's a thing to stop money laundering and terrorist financing. But for not just for crypto, but for anything, for anything. Like, it's not a crypto thing. It's a banking thing, okay? So we're just going to talk about what each country has done. Well, not all of them in the world. So the U.S. is charged, well, ahead of the curve. So the United States, ahead of the curve. The United States is charged with the conception of the Fat F guidance after basing the directives on the Banking Secrecy Act. So, FATF is based on America's Banking Secrecy Act, um, the country's primary anti-money laundering law. That's our money laundering law. In 2013, FinCEN determined that the BSA should apply to the cryptocurrency industry. Within this recommendation, FinCEN also confirmed the application of the BSA travel rule, issuing its own guidance for VASPs, Virtual Asset Wait, what's a VASP? Virtual Asset Services Provider in May 2019. So, in other words, what they're saying is America has gone beyond FATF. Well, first of all, FATF is based on our rules, the Banking Secrecy Act. But also, we've gone beyond what FATF asks you to do, all right? Which is why we don't have any fucking regulations for crypto fucking around here yet. All right, so that's that. So, that's what America did. We went a little hardcore. Now, Switzerland takes on the travel rule. Let's see what Switzerland did. As recently reported by Cointelegraph, one of the latest... All right, maybe I should... All right, let me just read a little. Hold on. Nah, nah, don't worry about it. What I just told you, don't worry about that. <laughs> exactly. America, we've gone beyond FATF. 
we've made them well our our country still is under the bank secrecy act which is stronger than the fat f shit so uh recommendations so let's see what switzerland is doing as recently reported by coin telegraph one of the latest countries to enforce fat f guidance is switzerland this week the swiss financial market supervisory authority lowered the transaction threshold for unidentified crypto exchanges from $5,000 to $1,000. Falling in line with FATF's travel rule threshold. You know, the travel rule is, um, oh, so I should probably explain that. FATF travel rule is any crypto transaction over a thousand bucks, uh, you have to know the sender and the receiver their address and all this information about them so basically kyc stuff kyc stuff it's not like that big of a deal um the new financial services act aims to address the heightened money laundering risks because you know switzerland you could send all the money you want back then but now they're going to be fat f compliant now what's the eu doing about how does the eu interpret the fat f's directives let's check it out holy look at this i'm talking to you look at this look at that do you guys see this? Bitcoin's going down to 9,825. Look at the numbers. It's fucking flying. Hold on. Let me look at something. Let's look at the real numbers right here. I guess it's not going to show us the market data moving. Oh, it still says 10,200 here on CoinMarketCap. Hold on. Let me look at something. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. CoinMarketCap doesn't do real-time updates. Yeah, look at the prices right here. Can you guys see that above my head? Let me look. Yeah, look at it. Boom, boom. It's up, down, up, down. Something's happening. Some boys are coming to play on the weekend. Look, look. Anyway, let's get back to Fat F. Um, where were we? Where were we? Now I've lost my train of thought. Okay. The EU's interpretation of Fat F directives. So the EU's fifth... So... All right, the EU's fifth anti-money laundering directive, AMLD5, came into force on January 10th, and it seems to mostly correspond with the FATF guidance. However, while an attempt to adopt the directives has clearly been made, the 5 AMLD is not as stringent as the FATF's guidance. So actually, Europe went less than FATF's guidance. Remember, it's guidance. You don't have to do it, but, you know, people are going to know what you're doing. Well, you know, other countries are going to know how compliant you are and stuff like that down the road. Uh, crypto to crypto exchanges will fall under the FATF's definition of a VASP, virtual asset service provider, aren't stated on the EU's list of obliged entities. So the EU has not included uh, VASPs in their AMLD5 directive. Uh, this indicates that crypto to crypto firms are exempt from, it's not 5 AMLD, you fucking idiot. It's AMLD 5. These crypto sites, you guys are such morons. The AMLD 5 directives also take a lighter approach to customer record keeping. FATF guidance uh, recommends data gathering on both the recipient and the sender, as well as liaising with other VASPs. While the AMLD-5 merely entails record keeping and the submission of data to financial intelligence organizations upon request. Uh, so just hold the data and if if some financial agency comes to or, uh, intelligence organization, then you give it to them. But uh, you don't have to keep, uh, you know, you don't have to gather the data and fucking send it. You just keep it. And if someone asks you, then you give it to them. That's what Chainalysis got in trouble for today. Chainalysis got in trouble for because they're saying that Chainalysis is getting paid by the U.S. government to spy on crypto. Which, yeah, that's what they do, you dickhead. They, 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 they fucking, they track transactions. And uh, anyways, whatever, man. Oh, and so this is about Oh, and then uh, Britain. So consequently, in its role as the UK's AML authority for crypto business, the Financial Conduct Authority 
the British SEC announced a new compliance regime alongside the standard AML practices, including those derived from AMLD5. The FCA necessitated all crypto firms to undertake ongoing monitoring of all customers. A definitive nod to FATF compliance. So, you see, Europe said you don't have to do the monitoring of the customers. All you have to do is, what do you say? Just, just keep the records, right? And if someone asks you about it, well, provide those records upon request. Whereas the British are doing the full thing where they're going to monitor the customers on a real-time basis type thing. All right, then FATF around the world, Japan, South Korea, and Singapore have been exceptionally receptive to FATF directives. At the end of January, Singapore announced its Payment Services Act 2019. Unlike the EU's ambiguous AMLD5 definition, the PSA requires digital payment token services, which encompasses both crypto businesses and exchanges to comply with FATF-ready AML rules. In line with the FATF guidance, Singapore set its travel rule threshold at around $1,000, $1,500. All right. Meanwhile, what? Meanwhile, in Japan, has always been a keen observer of cryptocurrency regulations, so blah, blah, blah. And South Korea has also heeded FATF's advice, passing a bill back in 2019 that established a legal structure for cryptocurrencies. The bill introduces an AML, anti-money laundering framework, requiring all crypto-related businesses in South Korea to follow FATF compliance. So South Korea is FATF compliant. All right. Is there more to this shit? Well, you can go fuck all that. So anyways, oh, that's why I didn't. Uh, yeah, that's right. Because then now they just start yap yapping about FATF. I don't really give a fuck about it. I'm here to tell you about what the governments are doing. And so that's what they're doing. And we've discussed it. And let us move on. Bye. All right. United States. Hesitance over blockchain. Crypto regulations could see it fall behind. Oh, yeah, America. Look, look, America. You got to get on the ball here, brothers. Look, look, got to get on the ball. So we're going to talk about it. Blockchain. All right, hold on. Let me get a sip. <laughs> Wait. All right, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've already talked about it here. We've talked about it many times, but these guys get into a little more detail. And look, I mean, it's not just America. It's fucking everybody. <clears throat> I mean, unless you're part of the Nation of Champions, you're behind. So you're already behind, son. It's not even America could fall behind. You're fucking behind, America. <laughs> you're fucking behind. You know, and so, you know, could fall behind that's a bunch of nonsense you're behind dagon malaysia thailand jamaica philippines indonesia bahrain switzerland pakistan france finland Liechtenstein, china uzbekistan and st kitts and nevis buddy we're already behind <laughs> we're already so why are you reading this then i just didn't think about that until i, I until i was sitting here at the table we're already behind America is supposed to be the global financial leader in all this. Come on, fuck sticks. Come on, America. Well, not supposed to be. We are the global financial leaders. But I mean, we have a new asset class. We should lead on this too. We should be coming out with regulations, rules and regs. Some rules and regs. So that the world can copy us and bang, we can get this whole crypto space going. Bang! Fucking lazy ass politicians. That's a problem right now. Shit. You know, we're in election season. So you know what happens during uh, here in America and during election season. These politicians are doing one thing. <laughs> dialing for dollars. Calling donors and begging for money. They really could give two shits about the, the work of the American people at this point. It's about getting themselves reelected. So not much work gets done during election year in America. Nope, not much work at all. And that's why I hope that the, the Mark Zuckerberg scare at least makes them do that. 
All right, go, go handle the mark, handle the crypto, and then go dial for your dollars, you fucking corporate whore. Uh, corporate whores here in America. That's what these politicians are. <laughs> Don't ever think they're not. Well, except Bernie Sanders, I mean. Uh, he doesn't take money like that, but. And I guess technically neither did Trump. Uh, Trump and Bernie. They're the only ones, but other than that, the rest of these are a bunch of corporate whores. Oh, yeah. Sucking at the teat. Sucking at the teat of corporate America, baby. All right, let's not get into that because that'll piss. I mean, I'll just yap, yap. But let's move on. Let's read. Look, look. Blockchain-based technologies and cryptocurrencies are today what the internet was back in the 90s. Bang! That's what I told you. And that's why we're waiting. That's why we're waiting. Just like the dot-com bubble, brothers. That's what we're waiting for. When I tell you, if you're new here, let me tell you something. There is a tsunami. Oh, yes. There is a tsunami of money coming to the space. We just need the regulations and stuff. This is the same. What does it say right here? I've been preaching this since the very beginning of this daggone channel. That's the only reason I even got into this daggone space. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be like the dot-com bubble. If you're my age, you remember the dot-com bubble. You remember the frenzy. And if you're a young kid, or, you know, just younger, look here, Foxtech. That went for eight years, from 1992 to the year 2000. Holy shit. Boom! It was a frenzy. It was a frenzy. If whatever you were invested in made half a penny, motherfucker, you were, you were rich. Yeah. My dad, all his buddies, bang, bang, bang. They couldn't make a mistake. They couldn't go wrong. Like, when, when computers first came out, our parents didn't know what they were, right? It was us, the kids, who were like, oh, yeah. you know, like today. I mean, same kind of thing, I guess. Kids always were up on the tech first. But my dad and them were making money off shit. They didn't even know what the hell they were invested in. We'd be at, like, a barbecue, like, at my, you know, and, and you know, my dad and his buddies. And me and my buddies would be like, these fuck sticks, right? They're all high-fiving each other, making all this money. And we knew that they didn't even know what they were buying. But it made the money, didn't it? And that's how this place is eventually going to get. And that's why I tell you guys, like, don't worry about the fucking pennies. Oh, but this is a penny more. Let me wait till it's a penny down. Let me wait. You, you fuck those pennies. When this tsunami arrives, the all-time highs that each of these reached before, back in 2017, we are going to blow those away. Those all-time highs are going to be blown away. And so... That's why, you know, since 2018, I've been telling you guys around here all the whole time, don't worry about fucking pennies. And I know, and I know, I know, not everyone has the means, but Shamari, I don't have that much money. Yeah, dickhead, but you're going to get money when they get here. But I want to make more. Yeah, or you could make nothing if you wait. Okay? Settle down. You want to make something or nothing? Or make a lot less by waiting, waiting, waiting. Just get your stuff and settle down, all right? You guys all want to, I want the moon, I want the billion dollars. You're not, that, look. If you get lucky and buy something that's at 0 0.00004 and it does happen to go to a dollar, well, that was pure luck, buddy. But if you want guaranteed money, guaranteed money when these institutional investors arrive, well, you just get yourself a warehouse full, buy, of cryptocurrency, buy, that is onboarded Fortune 500s, buy, and that is a success, and you will make money. Yeah, you take that money that you made. Yeah, you reinvest. You'll make more and more and more. Like, settle down. But the point is to make first your money on this first portfolio. Because remember this. Once these guys get here, you're not going to get a free shot like we have now. Just getting to sit around buying all this crap. <laughs> we just get to buy this at our leisure. I told you this the other day, didn't I? Something like that. Right? So just get stuff that's going to work now for sure. Well, that works now for sure. That's onboarded Fortune 500s, and that's why when you know the tsunami arrives, the institutional investors arrive, you are guaranteed money. Guaranteed. Don't worry about no 0 0.00004 shit. Because these fuck sticks, when they get here, they have analysts. Oh, yeah, and those analysts, they don't care about 0 0004. They care about how many onboardings you got, fuck stick. How much money you making, dog. Yeah, they're billionaires. They don't care about pennies. Well, I'm going to wait for a fucking penny, and then I'll buy it. No, they don't give a fuck about that. They're going to come here and, wow. Anything with Fortune 500 onboardings, wow. 
anything that's major, that's doing major stuff, wow. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a frenzy, just like the dot-com bubble. And just like the dot-com bubble, yeah, thousands of companies came. Yeah, but only a few made it. And since we have that example from back in the days when we were kids of what it looks like when, you know, sort of the world is opened up to this new thing, yeah, well, you know that only the ones, only the strong survive. So I'm just telling you guys, buy the strong now. Put the strong shit in your daggone ledger and wait for a tsunami. And that ledger is going to be worth, I'll tell you right now, this VeChain ledger right here, that's worth millions of dollars what I'm holding in my hand right here. This is worth millions right now. It's what I'm holding right here. And you can do the same. Just put, get proper shit. Uh, and just wait, man, and you'll get that money. Remember this, like, you're going to make money off it. Yeah, but you're going to do stuff in your other life. Maybe you're going to start a business. Maybe you're going to start other stuff. Like, just make money off this, right? And remember that. This is going to be like the dot-com bubble. Uh, a frenzy. A frenzy. And anything that is doing good, and that's quality, bang, it is going to fly. Until, obviously, the bubble will eventually burst. Hopefully by then, you and I will be out of this market. Well, not out of the market, but just have it. Anyways, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you'll have accumulated enough and taken on enough money where you're nice. You're nice. You know what I mean? But the market never ends. All right, look, look. Let's listen to this America crap. I'm starting to sort of, hmm, maybe I should have eaten something first. I'm trailing on my what I'm saying here. According to many observers, the dominance of sustainability the dominance and sustenance of the world's major economies depend heavily on their embrace of such technologies. However, such demands often lead to regulatory agencies choosing between oversight and the freedom to innovate, with the middle ground often found wanting. The United States is at such a point at the moment. Exactly. Right? That's the problem. Right? Finding the balance. Finding the balance of well, you got to have oversight, but you can't stifle the innovation. You got to find a little sweet spot in the middle, right? Um, and while SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce recently proposed to provide a safe haven period for, for crypto token sales, it is perhaps still too soon to say if regulators are really warming up to crypto. Well, American regulators. Remember, there's American regulators. A recent op-ed offered by CEO of Brooklyn-based Consensus Digital Securities, Timothy Fury expanded on blockchain and crypto regulations in the United States. It argued, many countries in these markets have smoothed the way for blockchain adoption by making innovative legislative changes, such as a flexible approach to taxation that address the real risks. The U.S. could fall behind these more sophisticated global players, imperiling both our economic competitiveness and national security exactly right what did what, what did the uk do they created new categories for crypto oh this crypto shit's crazy oh we got to make some new shit for this new regulations all right let me talk like an adult right they 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 just came up with new regulations and that's what they're saying here that's what these i showed you guys the hearings that's what our politicians are telling the sec and everything like look fuck sticks this stuff is not uh, stocks it's a whole new thing so make up new rules for it right right and i showed you guys the hearing i showed you jay clayton at the hearing right when the politician said are you going to make new rules for this stuff or are we and jay clayton was like oh yeah well we're going to come out and the politician told him well fucking hurry up he didn't say fucking but when politicians point and yell it means that <laughs> fucking hurry up he told him right and that's the problem Right? We have some of our politicians are hip to this, hip to this, whatever. But, you know, they know what's going on. We read and I showed you guys the, the, the hearing the other day, right, with Emmer and uh, anyways, a bunch of them, right? Right. And it's it, it, anyways, man. And so, you know, like that's how the British are doing it. And that's how the Swiss did it. Like they're defining them differently. Right. Like, OK. If you're, 
you know, if you're, a, what did it say? So some are cryptocurrencies, some are property, some are commodities, right? Like three categories you make these things. Well, that's how the British did it, right? All right, let's move on, man. And that's what they're saying. Like, come on, America, man. And because other global, other legislators have already done that. So because they have a flexible approach. A flexible approach. Well, not just the taxation part, but they have a flexible approach also to the innovation and everything. All right. So it can be argued that in the United States, crypto and digital assets still remain a largely uncharted territory, especially for institutional investors. Exactly. Shmori, when's this shit going to moon? When they can get here? When are they going to be able to get here? Well, when these fuck sticks give us the daggone, daggone regulations. Um, blah, 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 blah. This is primarily because of a lack of clarity. With confusion about crypto and blockchain regulations often becoming a barrier to wider adoption. Exactly. If I'm a hedge fund, well, I can't come here if I don't have regulatory clarity, can I? All right, hold on. U.S. regulators with regard to crypto... have been quite reserved when it comes to adoption, especially in comparison to China. This has resulted in the U.S. forcing itself into a precarious position. Well, settle down. We're not in a precarious position, but... <laughs> uh, the latest state of adoption report had a few insights that shed light on the overarching narrative of crypto in the U.S., Last year alone saw an intense crackdown. All right, fuck all this, fuck all this, fuck all this. All right, all right, let's just read it. Uh, last year saw an intense crackdown on non-compliant players in the crypto industry. Exactly, they're non-compliant, so you should arrest them. All right, look, fuck, fuck all that. So, with regard to policymakers in the U.S., politicians, very few seem to think of crypto and blockchain as a priority. This is the dilemma. This is the dilemma. And that's why, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Wow, and that's uh, and that's true. The majority of them don't look at it as a priority, but thanks to Zuckerberg, some of them do. Like Maxine Waters, she's the chair of the House Financial Services Committee. Oh, and she don't like her no Mark Zuckerberg and no Libra, and she has power. She's the head of the committee, right? And. Well, I guess fingers are crossed on my fingers are crossed hoping she fucking does something. All right. Um However, there are a few who see these new technologies in a more promising light. In tw in a tweet, Representative Warren Davidson echoed Fury's concerns and noted that Russia and China already have a head start in the crypto race. Davidson has also been a critic of the SEC's regulatory methods in the past. So here's Davidson here. Oh, 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 he's getting all angry. Actually, I didn't read this. Hold on, let's read. I don't usually read tweets, but let's read what Warren Davidson said. He said, if the U.S. blockchain industry ever is to have a fighting chance in the global market, Congress must remove the anchors from the industry's feet. This is correct. By dragging its feet, Congress is giving China and Russia a head start in their quest for crypto dominance. Ooh, all right. So he's angry. Oh, we got more. All right. Other U.S. congressmen like Patrick McHenry, McHenry have also thrown their weight behind the emerging crypto industry. In October 2019, during his appearance on the Unchained podcast, McHenry went on record to state that the default response to crypto ought to be yes, that should be the default. While these statements may seem over-optimistic and impractical, the presence of such industry-aware lawmakers may benefit the ecosystem in the long run. Exactly. Well, some of these guys actually know something, and so they'll be yap-yapping to their other politician friends and hopefully getting us some votes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You guys know about Andrew Yang. Also made news recently for his comments in an interview. What I would say is that we need more regulations, is what he said. Uh, and then Fury said, yet as the world adapts to blockchain, 
U.S. investments flow offshore. American financiers remain skittish about deploying capital to domestic blockchain opportunities due to regulatory uncertainty over what instruments will be considered a security. Right, you know, like what's going to be a security, what's going to be a commodity, what's going to be a property? Yeah, they're afraid, so they don't, they don't want to, what does it say? Right, they don't want to, where is it? Didn't it just say that? Wait. Yeah, okay, there it is. I thought I was losing my brain right there. Yeah, they don't want to deploy their capital. Yeah, I can't deploy my fucking capital if I don't know what the hell, man. If I don't know what the hell, well, fuck. Yeah, the fight. Sorry, stop talking like a child. If I don't know the regulations and the criteria that I have to meet to be regulatory compliant and everything, well, obviously I'm not going to do that. I don't want to get sued down the road or some crap, right? I've told you guys about that. Like, if I'm a, if I'm a hedge fund and I invest in, I don't know, any of this crypto stuff, and I lose my client's money, well, my client's easily going to say to the judge, well, first of all, my client's going to sue me. Well, first of all, you can't sue someone for losing your money, but you can sue them for investing in unregulated products. That's, I should make the distinction. Yeah, well, anyone who invests in this space, yeah, I'll tell you right now, if a hedge fund invests in VeChain and, I don't know, somehow it fucks up, and it loses their clients' money, yeah, while well, their clients can be like, yo, your honor, they invested in some unregulated crap. Yeah, and so they're hesitant about, where are we right here? Okay, they want to use the word skittish. American financiers are skittish about, their, about, about deploying the capital, man. So, you know, we need this daggone regulation. <clears throat> I've been preaching it since 2018, so it's ain't nothing new here. So let's get on, guys. I think I've yap yap. I don't know how long this thing is. This is this feels long. This feels long because my water is way down. <laughs> it is lag lag. All right, so let's get on. Let's do this. Bye. What do we got? Ben him. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yeah. TV News Google partnership with Hedera Hashgraph. Can generate 1.9 billion by 2024. I didn't read that, so I don't know. I don't have anything to say about it. Bang! Though, thank you for the story. Look, look what we got. Rawi Kumar. See you, brother. Bang! Look, look. And who's this guy? Coin DCX, best crypto trading platform. Of course you are. You're the best thing since sliced bread. You're gonna save the world, aren't you? Experience the power of platform that allows trade on global exchanges with features like lend, trade, futures, margin. Mm, all right, bang. <laughs> yes, all right, buddy. Save the world. Wayne, one, two, three, see you, brother. Bang. What's this guy's name? Oh, he's got a... Ramalingam S. Brand strategist, entrepreneur, guest faculty, current... Oh, current... Head brand and communications. Have I guess this CDX thing, Coca Cola, something, something, something. Bang! All right, see you, brother. Good for you. Look, look, this son of a bitch right here. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Got you, Ronquez. Bye. Love you, brother. Look, look, sweetie. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. Yes. Right. She's she's telling the truth right here. Look at sweetie. She gets it. Oh yeah, she knows. Do not open the Trini wallet until further notice. Bang! You've heard it from Stallion. Do not open that daggone wallet. I know you're curious. I know you are curious. Look, I I am super curious, but I am not doing I am not doing it. I am not doing it. Do not open that wallet until they until that 2.0, where is it? Until this shit comes out, this 2.0 wallet comes out, and then what you do is you open that wallet, you see your goods inside, and then you grab yourself a ledger and you take it right off that fucking piece of shit wallet right there instantly. That's what I'm going to do. Instantly. Oh, yeah, we're not going through this emotional roller coaster again. Not me, buddy. Look, look. Not me. What else did she say? Being your own bank is like standing up for yourself in court. Or worse. Exactly, you fuckstick. You're never going to win. 
not against a trained lawyer. <laughs> you better know your stuff. Laws, quid pro quo, and so much more. Talk about thin ice. Yeah, yeah. She understands the concept. Ah, all right, here's a bunch of miscreants right here. Who we got? Default 1 1. Bye. See you, brother. Think of family. Family cryptos together stays together. Bye. Look, look, Radster, brother from Prague. Bye. Poppy Wood. Bye. What he's giving us here. Oh, this steam it bullshit right here. Look, well, have at it, brothers. Have at it. Uh, look, there's nothing wrong with Tron. There's nothing wrong with Justin Sun. Justin Sun is not a scammer. Tron is not a scam. It's not a shit coin. It's just that he's taking his company in a direction that, for me, I'm not going there. And uh, so, but there's no scam. There's no problem. There's nothing. Uh, if you like that stuff, he's doing well. I mean, he onboarded three companies. He bought BitTorrent. He bought, was that D Live or D whatever the fuck? And then he bought this Steemit thing. If that's what you think you want to be invested in, go for it. It's not a scam. Just for me, in my portfolio, that kind of shit right there ain't going to work. Not around these parts. So look, look. Oh, oh, but first of all, love you, Poppy. See you, brother. Bye. He's calling himself DJ Tron. Come on. Poppy Wood. All right, blockchain style. What are you talking about? CB News, thank you for being easy to relate to. Thank you for being genuine. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I know, that was yesterday, but hope you had a good one. There we go. Uh, I definitely love what you have helped me to do. Of course, sweetie. My mind, my eyes are open. My heart is wide open. Even though most people around me are like... <laughs> yeah, because most people around you are fucking morons. Just like they are around me. All these fucksticks. I tell these fuckers about, yo, yo, get into Forex. Mm. Yo, get into crypto. Mm. They just don't want to do it. Like, and that's why, see, look, this is what she says the people around her are like. They give her a look like this, some stink face. Yeah, we all get stink face. Yeah, well, there ain't going to be much stinky face when you're fucking buying a millionaire, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, stink face. What you're gonna, this, is the, this is the face you're going to give them. Why didn't you do it, idiot? Why didn't you get in, moron? Why didn't you do it, fuckstick? That's the face you're going to be giving. <laughs> That's the face you're going to be giving them. You had a chance. You didn't do it. Fucked up, dog. Hear it? You fucked up, dog. Look, look, one more time. You fucked up, dog. So look, look, sweetie. Just handle your own business. Don't worry about the next man. He has to handle his own and deal with the consequences. All right. Who we got, Binium? CB News, Mumbai based cryptocurrency exchange Coindesk or Coin, whatever the fuck, part of the OKX to launch futures in India. All right, whatever. Good for them. Bang. Oh, I got another one. Look, look, steam it. Oh, this is the shit I just read. Blah, blah, blah. That's the big announcement. Well, you can keep your little, you can keep doing all that little weird stuff there. All right. Bang. Look, look, let's get out of here. Bang. Let's get you back. Wow, let's get this. Oh. Well, we're going to really run quick through this crap. I'm not going through every fucking story hardcore. I owe to Trinity wallet update. Basic. This is very simple. Shamar is going to tell you, very fucking simple. Do not touch your Trinity wallet until the 2.0 comes out. When the 2.0 comes out, you go download that, put your, 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 your key in there, and there's your shit. Once you see your shit, you put your shit on a ledger, Bumba clot. Bang! You put your shit on a nano. And that's how you keep your shit safe, son. Fuck all that and all this nonsense. All this little weird crypto nonsense, man. <laughs> Screw all that. Screw all that, all right? All right, Idle Hodlers. That's how you got to do it. Steam it joins Tron. Great. So, Tron has bought another company. So, now they're responsible for its success. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if that's what you want, you want like a little playground, you want to play in Justin Sun's little playground, have at it. As far as an investor goes, nah, I ain't, I'm not down with the playground. These boys ain't going to be down with no fucking kids, billionaire kids playground. And so 
Look, neither should you be. Well, I'm not saying what you should be. My bad, my bad, my bad. I don't tell you what to do with your money, but it's your choice. All right. Stellar-based exchange buys Perth Glory, the soccer club. Great. And yeah, it looks like these crypto companies are like I read to you yesterday, right? Uh, what was it called? I keep forgetting the name of this shit. Chili's. Chili's. <laughs> right? Yeah, they onboarded Barcelona. All right, so it looks like these companies, these crypto guys, some of them, not all of them, I mean, just some crypto guys there, they're using their tokens for interaction so companies can interact with their fans, or not companies, uh, you know, sports teams can interact with the fans and stuff, and yeah, that's cool, that's cool, you know, interesting, I've never heard about that. All right, I owe a tangle, EE, I told you, yeah, well. Look at all those companies. They're like, look, look. We're, they, the companies joined an organization to build stuff on IOTA Tangle, right? It's not IOTA begging them, oh, please use my Tangle. Fuck no. They already want to use the Tangle, and they've built a crew of guys who are like, look, look, let's see how to use this Tangle. And so that Tangle EE thing is amazing. And uh, yeah, guys. Yes. And then IOTA transport and healthcare uses. So... Transport we know about already. It's, IOTA's already in the Jaguars and the fucking uh, Volkswagen and Audi and shit. So we know about that. But what I thought was cool was I like that idea of someone calls 911 and someone's taking, you know, like the they're taking the patient's temperature and, you know, uh, you know they, they do the blood pressure and all that. And that's all we're going to be transmitted. So by the time you get to the hospital, boom. The nurses already know, well, those vital signs, I mean, they still got to find out more, but I mean, it takes a step out, you know, like usually you're in the van, you're in the, the thing, and they're just keeping you alive till you get to the hospital. Then you get to the hospital, they do your vitals. Then once they get your vitals, then they take care of you. Well, this is going to be the, the, the ambulance is going to do your vitals. So as soon as you step in the hospital doors, bang, they know about your shit, boom, and you'll be good to go, so... Great, great. That's a great use case for IOTA. Loving it. And it's already launched. And it's already launched. All right. And then global FATF compliance. Well, you got to get FATF compliance. And so, I mean, we're not going to go through it. I just showed you who's who's FATF compliant and how they did it. So that's FATF, everybody. It's the Financial Action Task Force. You have to be compliant or you will not be able to do business going further. And then finally, the U.S. could fall behind on crypto regs. Yeah. Yeah, well, these fucksticks aren't doing anything here. And like the the article said, it's not even a it's not a priority for these guys. They're just I just call it lollygagging. They're fucking dragging their asses around like And so but the beauty of this market is remember this. This is a global market. This is a global market. So, if you're not going to unleash your whales here in America, well, the Europeans will unleash theirs. And we read about that earlier this week. So, you know what I mean? I'm not worried too much about, you know, this patriotism kind of bullshit about, like, America's falling behind. I don't give a fuck about patriotism. I don't give a fuck about straight cash, homie. I can go live anywhere in the world. But, uh, um, but it is that. But the money, but the money, though, the money, the American money is deep. And that's why the American money is deep. And that's why we want it here. But. As this market ramps up, um, even if even if America doesn't get compliant first, well, it looks like the Europeans are going to be compliant and they're rocking and rolling. So, what did I read you about Europe? Hold on, we read some shit. I gotta, so I do want to mention that. Hold on, right? The Europeans are already rocking. Um, and so as these guys, right? The Ger the German banks. Oh, that's the using stellar shit. Hold on. Right, the digital asset bank in the UK. Oh, in the 40, that's the one. 40 German banks applying for custody service, fucksticks. Oh yeah, they're gonna unleash over there. They're gonna unleash over there. And so all we need is a little unleashing. Like, I don't care if it comes from America. I don't care where it comes from. Just bring that liquidity in here, buy this stuff, and uh, good, we're good to go. So. That's that. All right, let's chill and kill. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. I'm yap yapping.
bang subscribe below press the bell you get automatic notification when i do the show the greatest show on earth the greatest show in the multiverse look my name is shamar clock love talking money love talking crypto this is the favorite time of my day so thank you for having me in your home hope that wasn't too long i don't even know how long this is yet until i finish taping it but daggone this feels like a long show so thank you for having me hope you listen to it all and uh i will see you guys on tuesday have a great weekend spend it with your loved ones and all that bang subscribe below watch that video see you guys on tuesday smart clock i'm always on duty bye over and out <coughs>